What's up guys, in today's video, we're gonna see if I can replace my car with this $1,300 electric scooter. I'm a freelance videographer and typically work from home, so I usually use my car just to get lunch or maybe take a quick editing break and hang out at the park. Although I do edit a couple times a week at a studio that's about 25 miles away from me. So in this video, I'm gonna see if I can make it to Chipotle for some lunch, then head over to the park to play pickleball with my wife. And at the end, I'll show you what it would look like for me to actually take my scooter from my home to the studio where I edit a couple times a week. I'll also be putting this scooter through a couple of tests to see if it's actually as good as it claims to be. I have 37 miles of range on eco mode, so we'll see if this will last all day. And as for the scooter, this is the VX2 Pro with the GT package from VMAX. They were kind enough to send this out to me for free for this review. I currently own the Apollo City Pro as well as the Apollo Air, so we'll see if this stacks up against them. I would be shocked if this was comparable to the Apollo City Pro. If by the end of this review you're interested in the VX2 Pro, then visit the link below the like button and use code Austin Brady for a discount. Okay, so our first stop is Chipotle. I live about three miles away. Let's head out. So one of my concerns with this challenge was keeping my scooter from getting stolen because when you're at home or the studio, you can just bring it inside and it's safe with you. If you're not at the studio, like a restaurant, for example, like Chipotle, can you bring it inside? Are they okay with that? And then locking up a scooter is much harder than it is a bike. That's my main concern. We'll see what that looks like when I actually get to Chipotle is if they're chill with me bringing it inside. Okay guys, so we're gonna test out zero to 19 miles an hour or max speed. This is in mode two in sport mode. Mode. I'm about 6'2", 200 pounds with a 15 pound backpack. That'll give you an idea about the acceleration rate. Let's see how fast it goes. Okay, we're at 10 very quickly. 15 pretty fast, slowing down, 18, 19, there it is. Cool, so that's a decently fast speed. This is obviously not the fastest top speed scooter you can get. So that's really cool how fast it is. Although if you had maybe two 500 watt motors would be faster. I'm very impressed though. Compared to the other scooters that I've ridden in the past, this is extremely powerful. My wife has the Apollo Air. It's not as fast as this. Like that one takes forever, even in sport mode, even top gear to get up to speed. And this feels extremely fast, tight. I think maybe the lack of shocks has something to do with that, but that was really, really cool. So now we're gonna head over to Chipotle. So when I unboxed this scooter last night, I was really impressed with the build quality. I'll talk more about that later, but acceleration's good, handling's good. It's a very tight scooter. Braking is really good too. Let me just stop. You lean back, you use the brakes, you stop really, really well. Your stopping power is there. When I went to go test the scooter out, I got excited. I wanted to test it out last night. I was shocked at how fast the acceleration was. We're gonna try this hill climb. It's nothing crazy, but we'll see how fast it actually goes. I'm in the sport mode as well as mode two. So this should be able to handle this. Even though it's a single 500 watt motor, it should take it. Okay, we're up to 10 miles an hour. This is not a crazy incline, but it is. Oh, wow. Okay, it moves. We're at 16, 15. We're not quite top speed, but we are cruising at a decent speed. That's actually really good. If I was to use the Apollo Air or another scooter with the same motor, I don't think it would be able to take it quite as powerfully. That's impressive. So we just made it to Chipotle, super stoked with how the ride went. I feel like it was really, really good overall. And I think we're gonna be able to make it to the next destination, which is the park. I had to play pickleball with my wife. It's about 5.5 miles away, 47 degrees right now, not super warm or cold. I'm gonna go snag a burrito. We'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna head to the park to play some pickleball and we'll see how the rest of this ride goes. It's been really good so far. I feel like I've been able to make it to every destination I want to. Sheesh, a little bump in the road, a little off-roading there. <laughs> Yeah, 
We just finished up playing pickleball. Lizzie and I made some new friends and played doubles, but we also lost 11-2. What can you say? But we got some cool footage. So moving into features, VMAX is a Swiss brand. They started in 2015. And as for first impressions of the VX2 Pro, it's built like a tank. In the cockpit here, we have the display speed. We also have the mode that you're in, whether it's mode one or two, as well as sport versus eco mode. And we also have the odometer and the battery percentage. Power on button, which also changes your speed controls. The headlight button, our headlight right here, extremely bright. Our turning indicator button left and right with our bell right here. Then when you turn on the scooter, we have our acceleration throttle, our regen brake, our drum brake, as well as our kickstand, which is falling. Then we have our handlebars, very good grip. Turning indicator on the left, turning indicator on the right the stem comes all the way down four screws to keep this locked in with the handlebars extremely solid better than the city pro and the apollo air which i'm used to the most then coming down the stem here we have the holding mechanism which is really nice you just pop that it comes down locks in with the safety and then you move it in this is extremely solid it has like a soft touch almost with some resistance reflectors on the left and the right of the wheel maybe you guys can see that the 10 inch wheels these wheels are not off-road wheels but they did decent on off-road deck right here we have a 500 watt motor in the rear it's actually surprisingly powerful we also have the rear clip comes down clips in you can also release that bring it back up you can tell throughout the whole scooter that vmax cares about safety and stability the tires are wide the indicators and the lights are bright the rear brakes the reflectors even on the back left and right indicators just an overall really well-built scooter okay guys and the last stop for the trip today is going to be my home studio it's about 5.5 miles away from here so we'll see if we can make it all the way back I i'm confident that we will be able to when we get home i'm going to be sharing with you the exact specs pricing things i like the things i don't like and i think could be improved as well as what it looks like for me to drive to the studio that i edit at a couple times a week and whether i think this really could replace my car some really interesting thoughts about that i'll see you guys there Alrighty guys, we made it back to the studio. Now we're gonna dive into some of the specs of the scooter and also share with you some of the things I like, don't like, and also whether this would really replace my car or not. So as for some of the specs, we have top speed 19 miles per hour, range 37 miles up to 37 miles on eco mode. The weight is 44.5 pounds, max load is 286 pounds, the battery is a 48 volt. Motor power, this is a single 500 watt motor. We also have the brakes, the front drum, and the rear regen. Water resistance is IPX6, so it's not waterproof, but it does have a lot of water resistance. The incline is 28%. I'm not sure how that converts to degrees necessarily. The front light is 60 lux, and it also has a rear light for the brakes, turn signals on the front handle pars and on the back. We also have the 10 inch tires, suspension, there's no suspension, and the price starts around $9.99, unless you get the GT package, and that can go all the way up to $12.99. Right now with Black Friday, you can get discounts, or you you can also use my code Austin Bernie to get discounts after Black Friday. So here are some things that I really like. First of all, the headlight is extremely bright. This is very important for me if I'm driving at night and I want to be safe, I want to be visible. Also, the power is very surprising. You would not expect this amount of torque and pull and power coming from only a 500 watt motor, but VMAX has figured out how to do that. The turn signals on the handlebars as well on the rear is very convenient and also I think is very good for visibility. The indicators as well are very nice to use. You can feel actual feedback, whether it's left or right, so you know without having to look whether you're signaling. Maybe boring, but I really, really like the folding mechanism. It's quick to unlatch. When you put it together, it feels secure. Pops down, it actually clips into the actual folding mechanism clip, which makes it very easy for moving around. As for things that I didn't like and I think could be improved, I know VMAX on their more expensive scooters has suspension, but but I've seen scooters in the same class and lower price range have suspension. I would really appreciate that in the VX2 Pro because I'm used to suspension probably, whether it's a bike or an electric scooter, and I could feel every single bump, which actually pushed me to want to ride in the bike lane, which actually was a much better experience overall. But if you're trying to go off-road or you're trying to maybe go on a sidewalk, you want to have that suspension so your ride is more smooth. I also wish it had a faster top speed. Sometimes I needed just about three 
to five miles per hour faster just to get around something. But overall, I didn't necessarily need to go faster than 19 miles per hour, at least in the case of where I was riding today. So can I actually replace my car with an electric scooter? Yes, in some situations and no in others. For example, I live near public transportation. So in less than a mile, I can scooter over to the station, hop on a train, hop back off the station further north, and then cover that last 3.5 miles of the total 25 mile commute to be able to head up the studio where I edit out a couple times a week. Although for some people that may not be as convenient if they don't have public transportation. As for safety, a scooter can be less safe than a car because you're not enclosed. That's why it's really important to have a scooter like the VX2 Pro where you have a lot of visibility, you have turning signals, headlights, make sure you wear a helmet, and also make sure you're just smart. As for storage, there is less storage. I mean, it's a scooter versus a car, but you can carry more than you think. Today, I was carrying my camera, my A7S III, Mavic 3 Classic, as well as batteries, ND filters, all of that in a small backpack. You can even get mounts where you actually strap a water bottle or a speaker to the front of the scooter. There are options to carry maybe what you would need. You're just gonna have to be a little bit more selective about that. If there's a local destination, there's plenty of range. I traveled about 13 to 14 miles today total. If you're trying to commute somewhere much further, kind of like that work commute, and you didn't have public transportation, yeah, you wouldn't be able to make it. Unless, I guess you could scooter all the way, charge for a couple hours, and then try to make it back. Parking is gonna be a lot easier if you can bring the scooter in and it can stay safe. If you can't do that, then it's gonna be a lot harder. Yes, on the app, you can lock the scooter down, but I'm talking more about like a physical lock where you can actually put maybe a cable through it. As for traffic, a scooter will almost never run into traffic. You can zip around everything, which is really convenient. And you also save money on gas and get fresh air. So there's a lot of benefits and downsides to a scooter. I personally am not gonna replace my car with a scooter, but there are a lot of trips where I will use a scooter instead of a car. And the V2X Pro makes that a lot more convenient, which I'm really excited about. So these are the types of people that I think would be interested in this scooter in particular. Number one would be people who love micro mobility. They want an affordable option and a scooter that's built well with stability and safety in mind. I felt extremely safe on this scooter. I also think that people who live near public transportation would be very interested in this scooter because of the folding mechanism it locking in place and being lightweight. You can carry it with you. You have a decent range and also a lot of power and be able to save a lot on gas. And the last person would be someone who really enjoys riding electric scooters in general and wants to try something new. I was very skeptical about this at first. I did not think I would enjoy it as much as I actually do. I'm almost tempted to use this scooter versus a much more expensive dual motor fully suspension scooter because of just how much fun I had today. And that wraps up the review. If you're interested in picking up the VX2 Pro, then click the link below the like button and use the code AustinBrady for a discount. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.